A genre of travel writing for a very long time was about countries which had empires and sort of sent uh, these sort of hale and hearty fellows off to, to go and explain these strange exotic places to people back home. And exotic is a, is a particularly tricky word, one we should maybe just get rid of. Um, but that history, of course, yielded some great writing. It yielded some books that I'm very much in conversation with. Uh, but I think if there's any sort of guiding idea behind what I try and do in the Caribbean, I think of, of Toni Morrison's line about the necessity and also the, the job, I think, of writers of nonfiction, fiction as well in the new world, to think about creating a new map of, of the of a map of the new world that's about discovery but not about conquest. And I think that's a beautiful idea. It's a harder idea to put into practice than it is to say. Um, but it's something to aspire to, certainly. Um, I think that all of us would be silly to pretend that my experience isn't shaped by by the body I have or the citizenship I have, that being a white man with a U.S. passport uh, can't not shape my experience in the ways in which I, I narrate it. But I think that that, recognizing that fact for any of us, you know, it has to just be a starting point. It's not an end point. To say, okay, we need to be aware of these things. But then, where is it that we find the human connection, the human experience, and uh, the human stories to narrate? And I, along with working as a, as a writer, I sort of am trained as a geographer, which means, among other things, we think a lot about maps. And maps are another sort of great tool of imperialism, among other things. Um, but my vision for this book, and sort of my engagement with the Caribbean, has very much been to think about how can we make a map not that is about bringing a sort of vision of place and sort of seeing how it fits it. But creating a map that's about listening, it's about engaging with people, and how does that listening shift our vision of this place in this part of the world? And this is a part of the world that I had sort of strong ideas about its importance in shaping our culture, and shaping our modern world. Um, but the idea of the ethos is really about listening. Inside. There are musicians, there are historians, there are novelists. Um, they're you know, evangelists, they're hustlers, you know, so many people you're in conversation with. So, you know, what do you see the book as in the, in the genre? Is it important? I'm asking, you know, ir irrelevant question. And, you know, what kind of contribution you're hoping to make to conversations that are already happening in, a, in the place, but also about the place? Yeah, well, as I, as I sort of said earlier, I think, you know, the notion of travelogue is a tricky one. I think that it's often it's so predicated, first of all, on the visual, thinking about seeing sort of exotic things or crumbling buildings or, or sort of encountering the strange as we come back and we sort of tell stories about it. And of course, that's a notion in a genre that I think we need to sort of uh, get beyond in a very basic way. Um, so this book, my portrait of the Caribbean and portrait of, of the islands, uh, really grows right from, I didn't grow up in this part of the world. Uh, my encounters, as you put it, initially, you know, sort of being around, sort of hearing the Caribbean everywhere I went. I felt like, um, you know, I grew up in Vermont, uh, where there are not many West Indian folks, except, <laughs> except around the time of the uh, Vermont Reggae Festival, mm -hmm. sort of, which are you know, formative experiences in a way. Um, but then, you know, moving, I, I sort of went to college in Connecticut, fell in love initially with Jamaican music and with Cuban music, studied Caribbean literature, and sort of had a, had a hunch or a sense about the region that a lot of what I was interested in about the New World in general, and about culture in general, uh, which was the idea that all of us in the Americas, except for Native Americans, come from elsewhere. Um, we're all, in a sense, making it up as we go along, engaging with traumatic histories and violent histories but uh, creating new histories and new lives and new cultures. And it always struck me that the Caribbean was this extraordinary place to sort of think about those things. Uh, and so I started going, I went to Cuba first when I was 18, I went to Jamaica a few years later, and really for the last 20 years, every, every sort of chance I've gotten, I've gone to the islands. 
But while I was doing so, I was in, you know, I was in graduate school, I was studying geography. And was sort of encountering this whole literature, there's a really rich Caribbean literature now. The intellectual culture in the Caribbean is, has been so sort of predicated for the last few decades at least on saying, you know, there is a Caribbean culture. That these islands, no matter that they're divided by languages and, and different histories, have there's some essence that they share. And they share a sort of common history that has implications for their present, for their future. And that Jamaica might not sound like Zone from Cuba, you know, reggae might not be Cuban music, but that there's commonalities and there's ways to think about that in musical terms, in terms of rhythms from Africa and other sorts of things. But this book, I always conceived of it as a, as a journey, as much through the place and my idea of wanting to test those ideas and, and encounter these cultures up close and sort of hear the stories of them from the people who live them and create them. Uh, but also a journey through an idea and the idea that there is some commonality in the curtain and trying to test it here and there uh, and through all of these different islands. Um, and one of the sort of conceptions of the islands that I love, particularly Edouard Guisson, who's a great writer from Martinique, uh, has an idea he calls the poetics of relation, which is in a certain sense a kind of abstract idea, but I think what he was after, and he talked about how it seems to exist in the Caribbean in a potent way, uh, it's, it becomes very visible in the Caribbean. Itself. And the basic idea there is just that cultures, all cultures, are created in relation, are created by people coming into contact with difference with other kinds of people, uh, and that all of us figure out ourselves through those productive sort of kinds of contact. Um, and he says it's not, it's not in the Caribbean that this is the only place this happens. I think we all need to be aware of the ways it happens all the time. The difference is not to be feared. It's, it's, it's where culture comes from. Um, but he said that it becomes particularly visible in the Caribbean. And that was an idea I was always, I was always quite taken with.